previously on Wukong. Cheers. Cool. So if you like this video and like to see me try other types of Baiju or learn about the history of Baiju, let me know in the comments below. After an overwhelming response, uh, f four comments is overwhelming, right? Let's look at the legends and history of Baiju. In Chinese mythological history, the creation of Baiju is most often credited as coming from either Yi Di or Du Kang. Yi Di was apparently either the wife or daughter of the Xia Dynasty's founding ruler, King Yu. King Yu was one of the great sage kings of Chinese history, who had the power to control water. According to historical accounts, Yi Di successfully attempted to make wine out of rice. She presented her concoction to the king, and despite enjoying the beverage, immediately banned its consumption, fearing that a future king would become an alcoholic and lose the throne. After the king's death, his son Qi became king, and lifted the ban on the alcohol's production and consumption. From there, Baiju became used in ceremonial offerings to gods and deceased ancestors. These rituals can still be witnessed today, particularly during the annual Tomb Sweeping Festival, where family members leave offerings of food and alcohol to the deceased. The second story of the originator of Baiju is Du Kang. Du Kang was most likely also born around the time of the Xia dynasty, and the story goes that one winter, he stored cooked sorghum seeds inside a hollow tree and then forgot about them. By the time spring rolled around, Du Kang noticed how great the tree smelled, cracked it open, and then for some reason thought the best thing to do would be to try a cupful. Thus, as the story goes, Du Kang found he accidentally discovered how to produce Baiju. To this day, Du Kang's name is often used for describing exceptionally good alcohol. While these stories are all well and good, the truth is nobody actually knows when Baiju was first created, as it has existed well before written history. In 1987, archaeologists in the Shandong province found alcohol drinking vessels that were over 5,000 years old that seemed to contain a milk-based alcohol called Li Lo. From this discovery, we can assume that fermentation and distillation processes evolved to eventually incorporate cereals like wheat, sorghum, and rice, thus producing what we now know as Baiju. Regardless of when and where it came from, Baiju has become inseparable from Chinese culture. In Chinese, Baiju is called the water of history as it can be traced through almost every period on record. While some rulers tried to ban its consumption outside ceremonies, others loved it to a fault. Zhou Wang, the last king of the Shang dynasty, was blamed for bringing about the downfall of his kingdom as a result of his alcoholism. Stories claim that he had built a large pond of Baiju and spent his days chasing around women naked. Many Chinese artists, writers, and poets often credit Baiju as their source of inspiration, giving them the ability to put the finishing touches on their master pieces. Li Bai wrote 130 poems about Baiju and was arguably one of China's greatest poets, although he unfortunately drowned while getting drunk on a boat. Apparently, he was trying to scoop the moon out of the Yangtze River. In modern China, drinking culture is still going strong. As I mentioned before, it has been estimated that over 12 million metric tons of Baiju is produced each year, with 9.43 liters per person being drunk every year as well. So love it or hate it, Baiju is one of China's most potent cultural influences. Just do yourself a favor and drink in moderation. So thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and definitely subscribe. If you like this video and would like to learn more about Chinese history, why not check out this one on how to survive an ancient Chinese zombie apocalypse. Once again, thank you so much for watching, I'm Wukong, and goodbye.